We're going to spend this hour with uh, Yoichi Shimatsu, who is standing by. Dana Dernford uh, is uh, resting tonight. Uh, Yoshi is in the States right now, uh, not over in Thailand or Hong Kong or even Japan. So we're glad to have you here, uh, even though here is as discouraging as it gets, because I guess you've been walking the beaches. We have much to talk about this hour. How are you? Well, you know, we've been expecting this. and uh, well, We've been fact, warning people it, about it for years. Yeah, I have to say it's come so quickly, you know, a little faster than I imagined, you know. And uh, what Dana talks about in Vancouver, too bad he's not with us tonight, but the extinction event along the coast that he talks about seems to be affecting Southern California. Yeah. I contacted some friends who live sort of further up the coast to see if this is continuous down the west coast but uh my my first alert came from a neighbor of one of my relatives uh who said she had walked along the beach saw a dead sea lion saw a dead pup and then saw a dead sunfish these sunfish are giant you know disc shaped oh yeah yeah you know, they, they go out pretty far they're pretty deep they, they stay in warm waters so it's surprising that a sunfish would be far north enough to be knocked up. I never saw there. one. I lived on the ocean for almost 10 years. I never saw one. Yeah, yeah they're there for warmer water, so it's uh, it's uh, kind of depressing that the radiation is further south now for sunfish has been had. And then, you know, there's all kinds of speculation about domoic acid, about El Nino. Oh, please. please. Well, I walk along the coast and I find uh, the only shells, okay, that I see, you know, I'm not a real seashell expert, you know, uh, all I, you know, some are turbines, others are elongated, others are like corkscrews, but um, kind of a universal wipeout here in uh, south of L.A. We, I, I, I walk for about more, but, well, kilometers, maybe a couple, two, three kilometers, Nothing but tide pools. All of them, like, you know, tide pools are usually very organized places. You know, you see these, uh, everything is sort of, they're like pieces of art or living sculpture, right? They're very beautiful places. Sure. These are just devastated wreckages. You know, there's uh, destroy, you know, bits of seaweed, and the shells are all dead. You know, I would look at the oysters, you know, I thought, oh, at least oysters are still alive. I go up to them. And I touch them and they don't close, you know, they're all dead, you know, they're just clinging to the rocks, but they're dead. That's alarming. I found in that, in that, let's say over four or five kilometers, about four kilometers of coast, I found two abalone, small ones, very small ones, two fish, one crab, but lots of hermit crabs. And I'm wondering, there's just, I've never seen so many hermit crabs in my life because all the shells are dead. You know, the turbine shells mm. are all dead. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they're packed with hermit crabs, large ball. And I realize the shell, why are hermit crabs, I'm thinking, why are they the major survivors of this wipeout? And I realize, oh, they hide in these shells, and the shells are sort of like armor against radioactivity. They contain calcium, right? The shells make calcium. Oh, very smart. And so they're, yeah. they're resistant to, so in other words, the calcium will resist strontium because they're very similar chemically. So from that I can deduce, from that I can deduce the fact that hermit crabs are alive. They hide in these shells. Now mollusks, of course, won't survive, won't survive because they're soft tissue, right? The hermit crabs got dual protection. That's a very good call on your part. Very smart. Yeah, they got the shell on its back, calcium shell, and then they got their carapace, this armor around them. Mm -hmm. So they're they're more protected than other creatures. Uh, they're very opportunistic animals. Um, so basically, I figure out this must be strontium that's killed everything. Yeah, strontium. Because mm. strontium is, uh, you know, it penetrates your bones, so it's penetrating these shells slowly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the hermit crabs have this defense, the calcium act like kind of a shield against the strontium. Right. So we have a str so the strontiums killed everything. Now the algae along the tidal pools are are dead. Further out, on the very you have to understand, we've just seen this low tide, right? And it's been this full moon, 
low tide, so it's a very, very low tide. So I go out to the end of the rocks, you know, where the rocks disappear, basically. Right. The tide pools disappear. I can walk out there. I notice there's seaweed out there, okay, living seaweed on the rocks. Uh-huh. But halfway in, halfway in, it's all dead. It's gone. Okay, it's broken apart. Then I measure the kelp. The smaller kelp don't have much radiation, but the larger ones, you know, the really big ones that are like several years old, they're like 0.36 uh, microsieverts. So that's pretty high. Those are that's, Fukushima that's, ocean. That, that's right. Let's say it's off, offshore Fukushima. You know, yeah, they, yeah. I, I measured off, let's so, say, so, you know, below, below uh, 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 south of the Fukushima nuclear plant. That's about the levels in the kelp there. So not, not good news. Wow. That's not very bad news. news. So basically, we can assume the kind of destruction that Dana Durnford has been talking about, while it maybe is not as extreme as Vancouver in terms of the, you know, thousands of species knocked out, we have like a significant destruction. And the other really interesting thing I thought, I've never seen so many tiny shells. You know, thinking of this, I don't know if people remember, he was a really sleazy crooner from Hawaii named Don Ho. And he would sing oh, yeah. a song. To the tourist ladies called tiny shells. Yeah, yeah. Tiny shells in the water, you know, in Hawaii. Uh, yeah. And I, I'm just think, I'm just thinking, I've never seen so many tiny shells. You know, these things would fit easily, you know, like two lengthwise, some of them like maybe half, about half the length of a penny. Hmm. I took a picture. I'll, I'll, I'll post something for you later. Yeah. Of these shells on a penny and then home. Oh, just dozens and dozens of little shells, and I'm wondering what happened, you know? Are these things that somehow their growth was retarded, but they didn't grow, because shells grow pretty rapidly. Hmm. It's very rare to tiny shells. You know, I asked some beachcombers, have you ever seen so many tiny shells before? They said, never. And then, and then the next question I asked these beachcombers, uh, are there less wiggly things in the water? Are there less creatures running around? And they just gave me this depressed look and nodded and walked along. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. In other words, people are pretty depressed yeah. you know, around here. What was bothersome is people know about it. They know, they probably, you know, some of them know it's radiation, but they don't know what to do. Okay. No, and the, and the sad thing is there's the nothing, nothing they can do. Yeah. It's dead. It, 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 and they don't know what to say. They're dumb. You know, I mean, there's the, there's the, the, yeah, yeah. And also, they don't want to go against the marine authorities because then it's going to be a challenge, right? Well, and then you got a little bit of denial mixed in there too. So, well, they don't want to face the full brunt of this thing. No, you know, that, no. that there's been a massive kill off. There's just a dead whale reported down by uh, somewhere around San Onofre too. Yeah, you know, mm. you know, beaching. Mm. I just heard about. Yeah, you know. humpback. Uh, not not clear what I got found. That was just the initial uh, flash of a report mm. that we got here, and then that was it. Was it didn't mention what? Well, they're mentioned. due. They're due for an obvious uh, increase in mortality, uh, washing up the calves. Yeah. Uh, the, the okay. Stuff. Okay. Yeah. But why? Why don't we? Say, well, there has been an increase in mortality. I know this is no sea lions. You know. I'm going to read. I'm going to read something. Yeah, there's none left. And we see like this. They're gone. I'm just a shock. In the harbors and all. Yeah. These would be real pests in the harbors. They're gone. And then, then, well, then, then, you know, well, anyway, when this neighbor tells me about the dead sea lion mother and pup, it's at nighttime. So I said, well, I'll mm-hmm. the, check the tide chart. Okay, about three in the afternoon is low tide. So I go out about 1230. I, I walk to a rocky point. Then I see this giant, not giant, but a large earth mover. You know, it's sort of like a bulldozer uh-huh. out there with a dump truck. Mm-hmm. And they're sweeping part of the, just a part of the beach. So they're obviously removing bodies. I'm rushing toward them. You know, it's about, oh, easily 500 yards. I'm just rushing, you know, right, walking as fast as I can toward them. But then they just, by the time I get them, they're gone. They screwed up the hill and they're gone. In other words, this is like kind of a very, you know, they, uh, uh, they dart in and dart out. They do these operations huh. and they move all the dead, the uh. larger dead animals. Mm-hmm. Huh? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it makes sense. You got it pegged. They don't want this. Uh, they don't want this in the news. So they get in and they get out. Cover up. State of California. Yeah. The Coastal yeah. Commission. Yeah. You know, they're, 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 they they got a full on cover up going here. Yeah. 
I'm and telling you, the real estate people aren't happy either. <laughs> oh, we lost him. We're getting back. This is uh, unquestionably exactly as he just said, a cover-up. Uh, they're removing these bodies as quickly as they can. And I'm telling you, uh, real estate agents are sweating. They know. They know what's going on. There are a number of stories up at rents that you can read and further explore this. Hopefully you will. It's, it's your planet. You ignore it. It's your own peril. Dead animals litter California beaches. Alarming phenomenon. Another quote. Graveyard of washed up sea life. Another one. Influx of malnourished sea creatures. The, ec the experts are saying, yeah, yeah, you're back. Uh, the experts are saying yeah. we're really starting to worry. The animals are starving to death. They're covered in sores, stunted growth, and have weak immune systems. Absolutely classic radiation sickness symptoms. No doubt about it, Jeff. And uh, I wish, you know, I I'm thinking, you know, instead of all the denial and cover up there, has to be some sort of tactical plan, you know. And maybe this thing in the last five years, maybe the last 50 years, but we need a plan to save what can be saved, all the species in you know, places like aquariums. Uh -huh. They have to. Groups. They have to. They, they, yeah, I mean, yeah. Because, you know, what's, what's the name that uh, conservancy group, you know? That, Nature Conservancy. Uh, Nature Conservancy. They got, what, so many hundreds of thousands of acres that are worth a billion dollars, you know? Oh, yeah. They're they loaded. Something. They got lots of money. I mean, they could be doing something. They own lagoons. They own bays. They own Chan they own uh, Santa Cruz Island off uh, Santa Barbara. It's, uh, I they, know that. they own that. Uh, yeah, I mean, they could be trying to do not only research, but they can also be building, like, inland shelters, you know, uh, where we can filter out radio. You know, radio well, where's, where are all these SeaWorld parks? Well, they, they need to take the lead. They've got the publicity yeah, base. Yeah, yeah that's SeaWorld. You know, they got a huge fan base. It's time for all these... Yeah. Marine groups that said they're just kowtowing to some nonsensical people at NOAA or, you know, whatever, wherever they're, they're from. So, you know, the private sector uh, and the NGOs should do their own, you know, radiation prevention program, you know, and uh, marine rescue program. You know, I think, you know, they, they've got to show what they're worth now, you know. I mean, they don't have to be beholden to the government. You know, nature concerns he doesn't need the government, you know. They got plenty on their own. You bet they you know, do. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're as rich as the government. They're a government unto themselves. I mean, yeah, yeah. and Sea World also. You know, they you know, they can out muscle the government. They got the fan base. They got all the kids with them. Right, teachers with them. It's time these these groups step in now. They have Amen. to step in. Yeah. You know, otherwise it's really over. I mean, it's it's going to be like, you know, the, it's like a windshield wiper. You know, it's it's done one swipe here. Give it a couple of more swipes, and this this window pane is going to be clean. Our windshields are going to be clear of all life forms. No more. Yes, you know, yes it's again. A, the analogy yeah, on the over. insects on the window pane on, on the on the windshield, right? Pretty soon there aren't going to be any here. You know? I don't. Hey, it's spring. I'm I'm not getting uh, any. Very little. Yeah. I don't see any yeah. birds. Uh, no yeah. songbirds, no no finches, yeah. no sparrows, no red winged blackbirds, no no meadowlark, nothing, nothing. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, you you see the problem is is a lot mountainous, more mountainous up there, you know. In yeah. British Columbia, there's you know it just faces these gigantic mountains. Unfortunately, mountains don't have snow or ice, which we'll discuss. Dana uh, informed me that he went up there. Uh, First time ever, up, the glaciers are gone. Glaciers are gone, snow is gone, and in your area, you know, the insects are gone. But down here in the south, we got more like hills, you know, but they call them mountains. They're not real mountains. Oh, I know so, what you mean, yeah. Yeah, the south, the, the, the birds, the geese, they're still here. Because they're not so close to the clouds. And also, the desert is more like desert. Right. So there's not, but, but where it's cloudy, where it's mountainous, and you get uh, forced precipitation, fog, clouds, that's where the kill-offs are going. You know, the tritium is there. It's killing them Please all. understand, people, this is not going to stop in your lifetime or the lifetime of your great-great-great-grandchildren. No. It's no, over. No. The sea is not going to replenish itself. 
uh, like Dana said, the soup of life. Uh, it's not there anymore. The soup is, is nothing. There's nothing in it. There's no base stock to regenerate the thousands of species that are being eradicated. Already yeah, have been eradicated. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it sound, may sound crazy, but like a giant coastal area of all the, of all, you know, effort by all the divers here, all the surfers to, let's say, remove the large kelp when, you know, when they get big because they've absorbed, they've bioaccumulated, dry that out somewhere in a safe place and bury it or, you know, put it in some sort of storage containers or in, into rock in a mountain and then plant new kelp. You know, they're, therefore, you have this sort of uh, vacuum system, bio, you know, a bioaccumulation system to suck the radionucleotides out of the water as kelp is so effective. As kelp you know. kelp That's is one way. Yeah. Uh, you'd, you'd ha- it would be an enormous project because the, yeah. the supply of radiation yeah. is endless. So it would be a... Yeah, Yeah, we have to continue doing this maybe for, who knows, decades, centuries. I don't know, but unless we do it, you know, we're going to be on a lifeless continent here. See, the the radionuclides that are being dumped into the ocean have half-lives, some of them of tens of thousands of years. They're not going to go away. No, no, no. So those we're going to, in other words, but the ones with shorter lifespans, at least you can absorb those, and hopefully the dosages will go down. It'd still be like Russian roulette in the water for anything there. There you but go. At least if we yeah. reduce the total uh, concentration, that's, uh, that's the best we can achieve. I mean, this is why nuclear energy is so dangerous. Yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, it's pretty like bullets in the water. It's and, forever stuff. It, it's, it just yeah, doesn't go yeah. away. And, and the best we can hope is to reduce the concentration, the intensity of the barrage. That's the best we can achieve. And that will take like dozens, maybe hundreds of years. But somehow to protect the environment from being so radioactive that nothing, nothing at all survives. You know, we just, can't even clean the damn plastic out of the uh, Pacific. It's the yeah. biggest the state of Texas. A floating yeah, yeah, area yeah. of plastic refuse, and we can't even yeah, well, do that. Yeah, well, that 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 is one you know, giant spot. But then we got all of the chemicals from the plastics, of course. Oh yeah, that leach out all the styrofoam, Const- which is in every drop of water. Phytoestrogens, bioestrogens, yeah. uh, you name it. What have we done, Mike? It hasn't been that long, has it? Yeah, you know, nuclear power came in in the '60s. Plastic came in. About the same time, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. these are these, these things haven't been around that long, you know, mm-hmm. sixty years. That's what's going to be like in two hundred years. It's not going to be two hundred years. That's what we got realized. A fly speck yeah, it's of not time. Going to be years. Yeah, we we talking about when you and I were kids. This stuff came in. Yeah, and in one lifetime, we just about finished off the planet. You know. In not, five I mean, years, friend, five years is is one of You're the major years. parts of that death knell we've given to the planet. Yeah. Now, and all yeah. these radiate remember, all these reactors, all nuclear power plants are spewing radiation around the clock yeah. into the groundwater, into the air. You yeah. people, you're dying if you live near a nuclear power plant. Get the hell away. Yeah. Upwind. Yeah. And not, well, it is tough. It, it's in the air. You know, I mean, they spew the stuff in the air. It escapes with gas. It, the nuclear waste is not properly disposed of. That's leaking out. Uh, you, know, you know, a lot of that material, like the low-level waste, gloves, you know, are being burned. is in rain. Exactly. That goes up in the air. Yeah. We have so flooded this environment with radiation. There's so many chemicals, so much garbage in our diet that, you know, uh, really... In one, uh, you know, it, it, very, very conceivably, in one generation. I mean, by the time That's you right. and I get over, it's, it's basically over. You know, the next generation yeah. has no chance. Yeah, so no that, chance. That's, what's, happen- that's yeah. what's happening in Japan, as yeah. everyone knows. It's like, uh, yes, it's not. You know, they say, well, Japanese couples don't want to have kids. Japanese women don't. Want- They're afraid <laughs> to have kids. They're afraid uh, to have kids. Right. Who wants? Who wants a mutant? I mean, I hate to say it. You know. Your chances of having a mutant are astronomical now. You know, it's ridiculous. Is this going to be the condition all around the world? You know, the Japanese have succeeded in killing themselves off. There's not going to be many left. 
after look, another general. Look at uh, that uh, town. I uh, forgot the name of it. East of Hanford, Washington. Uh, the yeah. graveyard there. One guy yeah. said yeah. that I know of graveyards in this town that are full of babies born with no brains. Jeez. Yeah. E- empty, yeah. empty cranium. No brain. Yeah. No brain. Yeah. yeah the nervous system shot. Yeah. It's gone. Yeah. No development. And I'm afraid that may be the model of what's happening to the marine life. Right. Nervous I agree. systems. Nervous yeah. systems, they have very crude circulatory systems. You know, they're not like humans. They don't have well-developed blood vessels, hearts, and all that. So they're just wide open. These, these soft uh, critters like mollusks or fish, they're just wide open for attack. You know, so they don't have they any don't, protection. They have no chance. Uh, yeah, but, you know, all I can say is I hope you take the hermit crab of Roche. Yeah, you know, you know, well, I'm trying. House with, uh, yeah. yeah, with calcium, you know, I mean, you know, with every kind of nuclear buffer you can think of. I think I'm doing that, that. The, the bio superfood, uh, the Chernobyl yeah. well, product that, take every body, day. Body, every day. Take care of your body, but yeah. think about your habitation. Learn from that hermit crab. I you was know, hit that, heavy uh, about yeah. two weeks after when the plants blew uh, I, yeah. for about 10 days. I don't know what it was. Yeah. I'm guessing iodine, but it was in my sinuses. It was the weirdest sensation, pain yeah. back in my throat. Yeah. Uh, it was obvious that I was being hit. Oh, and then oh, we got it. Yeah. yeah, right. That, that, uh, that metallic taste is easy. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, 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 there it is. is sharp, See, sharp. I should have cancer by now, but thank God I, was, I started taking that, uh, that, the bio yeah. superfood and, and clean. I was clean to begin with, vegan. And I'm yeah. I'm in good shape. I take a lot of uh, supplements, although uh, some people would say you don't need that many. I don't know. I do, and I'm I thank God I'm okay. Uh, a lot of people yeah, are not okay. okay. They don't feel good. No, they no, have no, chronic no. fatigue. Okay. They don't know what's wrong with them. Uh, I'm telling you what's wrong with them. Look at Hanford, for God's sake. Yeah. It's leaking yeah. into the Columbia River, folks. You yeah. think of yeah. P- Indian Point? It's leaking into the Hudson. What have we yeah. done? Yeah, that sun flows down to either side of New York City. I mean, you know, let's let's get down from Manhattan. You know, it, it's New York City. It's in the in the Hudson River Valley. You know, those are like cliffs on either side. That's where I found that Fukushima. It's most dangerous when you're when you have these uh, very compressed spaces. You know, with radiation. That's where it really builds up. It's really deadly. So along that, there's a little uh, highway to upstate New York along the Hudson. You know, that, that's just a highway of death for anyone going there. Anyone who has to commute that, you know, so. Uh, I mean, one thing, they're not teaching people the basics, and the governments there should be spraying down those roads. I mean, there, there's got to be things done, you know, to save people. Well, the first thing that the bastards uh, have to do is admit that there's a problem, and they won't do it. Exactly. Unless you admit there's a problem, how are you going to do anything? And by the time you admit, it's going to be too late. You know? Amen. And, yeah. And then, you know, uh, other, you know, a lot of people are saying, gosh, so many people have died of late, you know, so many celebrities have popped. Well, why do you think everyone's popping off, you know? They're not, they keep... Yeah, you, you, you know, haven't seen popping anything popping yet, off. folks. Hold on, yeah, uh, Yoshi, we've got to take a little break here. We'll come right back. Uh, stay tuned. We shall continue. Conversation. It's our weekly report on the Fukushima catastrophe, and he'll be with us for the rest of our lives, as I said, thousands of years, barring some kind of off-planet interference with technology we couldn't dream of. Nothing we can do. There's a story going up tonight, two of them, I want you to take a look at. In the Fukushima radiation section at the very top center column of the news department at Rents. Ruined Chernobyl nuclear plant will remain a threat for the next 3,000 years. Horrible. Now, Fukushima is going to remain a threat. In fact, an agent of annihilation, mass extermination and extinction 
for maybe tens of thousands of years, barring some kind of technology we can't dream of. The technology needed to repair it, to reclaim it, to salvage it, to shut it down, to cap it doesn't exist. Another story, Idaho Falls. If you live in Idaho Falls, you better read this story. A darkened central control room with more than 25 computer screens watches over nearly everything occurring inside the radioactive waste treatment plant west upwind of Idaho Falls. The Advanced Mixed Waste Treatment Project. A waste treatment project for radiation. It's a major radioactive waste facility, and there are trouble issues in Idaho Falls. Read the story. I'll put it up later tonight. I'm talking with uh, Yoshi, as we do nearly every Monday for uh, nearly five years now. And the story is not good. You've heard him talk about his walk along the beach. I read a little bit of the material regarding what's happening in California on the beaches. And any of you listening who live on the beaches are probably already seeing this to a degree. Uh, I'm going to read just a little bit more here about the, the story that nobody will talk about. Dead animals litter California beaches, a graveyard of washed-up sea life. The experts say we're really starting to worry. Starting? The animals are starving to death, covered in sores, stunted growth, weak immune systems. They're dying, folks. And they're not just starving to death. They're starving to death because the food chain is destroyed. Here, I'm going to read some quickies. NBC, L.A. Officials are investigating why six sea lions are washing up on shore. The Laguna Beach Pacific Marine Mammal Center has an overflow of sea lions. The reason for the influx of sea lions remains a disappointing cold water food source. Wrong. NBC LA, a second story. Now an alarming number of sea lions are washing up along our local beaches. When they say washing up, that's a euphemism for basically they're dead. Uh, it is taking longer to rehabilitate these six sea lions. And as most of you can figure out, there's really no way to rehabilitate them because even if you do, they're going to go back into the environment that made them sick and killed so many of them to begin with. Laguna Beach, Independent, a newspaper. Most are malnourished and many are infected with parasites. The rehabilitation process is slower this year because the sea lions are coming in far sicker and older than usual. Salon Magazine, Internet. Dead animals litter California beaches. California is in its third straight year of unusual mortality rates for sea lions. The dismal state was first declared January of 2013. Think 311. And death rates have increased each year since, exactly as we told you it would happen. Yoshi, we sadly haven't been wrong about anything. Well, we've been too right. I mean, you know, in, in fact, you know, I've always said that we've tried. People at first accuse us of being alarmist. Now everyone's quiet. All those accusers now are mum, Okay. Now, our big mistake is we, we, we didn't go far enough. We weren't alarmist enough. You know, that, you know we, we, were, we were cautious. It's far worse now. That well, we tried to be worse. journalists. And, uh... Yeah, we tried to just do with what the facts would give us, what we can discern without going overboard. But, you know, the situation itself is overboard. I'm a mass extinction. I was down at the Laguna Beach Marine Mammal Center two days ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Oh, it's a full house there. I mean, uh, they got they got uh, pups. The place is packed with pups. You know, it's just uh, astounding. It's just no room to move. You uh -huh. know, they're corralled together. Uh, yeah, and, and it's really wonderful to see them. You know, alive. But you know, they're what's their to be future? Back. <laughs> That's Re release they're, they're release really back into death. Back in the wild, but that yeah. that would be like sending them to sure death. I mean, sending them to fire. So. I, you know, this is where I'm, I'm saying that it's got to be, that's a one rescue center. Uh, I wish they would be gutsier and just, they know it's radiation. They're not going to say, 
Uh, now they're, 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 their guides are saying that there's, they're all suffering from starvation, from a lack of fish due to warmer waters. And then you just read a report from MEC because it's the cold colder water. waters. Nothing, they can't keep their stories straight. No. no. It, it has nothing to do with that. It has, you know, uh, obviously. Uh, I mean, and, and there's always temperature fluctuations, you know, off the, off the Southern California uh, coast. I mean, these animals can move oh, up and down I'm the coast. Oh, I'm well aware. Yeah. You bet. So, uh, yeah. There's no problem for them to move up and down the coast in search of food. It's yeah. just that uh, you go up and down the coast, there is no food anywhere, you know. So Dead is, birds on the beach, uh, starved to death. There are no birds left. Uh, in fact, Dana last week said he yeah. saw about, what did he say, two or three birds per per mile yeah. that he traveled. Yeah. Uh, that's we it. Don't, we don't see too many dead birds because basically the eggs, they die as hatchlings or they die in the egg. You know, right. so yeah. it, there's just no renewal of birds. And uh, so there's a lot of older birds, but we don't know how, you know, unless you're an ornithologist, you don't know how long... The older ones are expected to live, you know, how they fend for themselves, what kind of food they eat and all that. But you just see not too many chicks out there. You just don't see too many, like ducklings, you don't see too many ducklings. Right. Occasionally you'll see a uh, mother duck with some ducklings, but they're just not like numerous as before, you know I mean? Before, we, we never really appreciated, you know, what we had before. You know, wonderful living world. We just thought we could just, you know, Eliminated bulldoze over, put up parking lots and uh, condos and everything. You know, uh, you know, we never we took it off the ground, but now we're going to be a very alone as a species pretty soon. You know, this this is what's scary. It's going to be us and the bacteria, or whatever is out there to take. And the cockroaches, the cockroach, and maybe some predators. Yeah, you know? some others who are very hardy. Right. You know, have toxic, toxic uh, systems. You know, strong immune systems. Very uh, immune to. There'll be uh, some adaptation, uh, like the uh, wild well, like, pigs uh, yeah, the in wild Europe in Japan, and wild boars in Japan. Well, they're, not, they're, yeah. they're, they're survivors because they can handle toxicity. You know, these animals eat a lot of mushrooms ordinarily, so they develop in kind of. Oh, ah, very good. Yeah, yeah, they're able to urinate out the radiation very quickly. You know, mm -hmm. they eat and they mm -hmm. urinate. Their bodies are used to handling this stuff. That's why they're they're flourishing. Mm -hmm. Well, they're kind of a dangerous species because there's no limit to their growth. And you what know, predators uh, do they have? None, really. None. And, and they're they're pretty. They can be pretty rough with humans. The humans are very rough with them. Throw firecrackers at them. Be laid down. Shoot them. So they have no love for humans. And they'll eat a human too. If they well, they may be running them. around in uh, small packs. Uh, Predatory packs here at some point. Who yeah, knows? yeah, they get large. They get very, very large. You know, they, they have memories. They remember how abusive humans were to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was thinking they're, about they're very, very uh, gentle. I really like wild boar. They're actually very gentle, nice creatures, but huh. humans have done horrible things to them. You trap yeah. them. You know. Oh, look yeah. what we've done to whales. Uh, same thing. Exactly. I was thinking yeah. about what you said the other day. We we are we are. I have uh, some, there's some geese, it's Canada geese here, and they, they have the smallest uh, number of hatched babies in five years. I think I've yeah. counted 10. 10. They're yeah. usually 20, 30, sometimes over yeah. 30. And how, many, how long many of those are survived is a real question, because they're more vulnerable. Their cells are dividing. Why do the young ones die out? Because of cell division. That's when radiation really messes up your chromosomes when the chromosomes divide you know the dna splits apart you know splits apart that's when radiation just will break those strands it's, it's almost trying to cause a mutation it will lead to death because you know you know it will work will basically knock out vital parts of your dna so that's why we see older animals about but the young ones just don't make it and uh what this means for humans, we're seeing in Japan. You know, the population has shrunk by a million. You know, you said, five. also you mentioned ducks. Uh, I've, yeah. I've seen maybe three ducks this year, usually 10, 20. They, okay. they, they, they're insect eaters, remember that. They eat insect. Yeah. Canada yeah. geese eat grass. Uh, the other problem, they eat a lot of water plants, and there's a lot of radioactivity in those water mm -hmm. plants. So mm -hmm. it, and then, yeah, you usually see every spring, right? Like at this time of year, you see a mother duck leading a bunch of, uh, you know, ducks. You? Oh, yeah. 
10, 12 yeah, sometimes. Yeah, we don't see that. We're no. just not seeing that. Yeah. You know? And when, how far that comes down the food chain is going to be a good question. When, you know, you're not going to have eggs for breakfast anymore. If you notice worldwide, the price of eggs is going up. Yeah. You wonder why. You know, is it because of radiation? Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. The eggs fail to mature. Chickens, their sure. ovaries are under attack. It's a worldwide phenomenon. Price of eggs is going up. I know we're the scarcity of eggs. This, oh, people, is, this is so. This is so extensive. Yeah, the damage oh, it, to life. It, it's it, so extensive on yeah. life. Yeah, on other life forms. The chain is not something that's readily visible as being big links. Oh, you got twenty, thirty links. It goes in many directions. This chain. It's got many yeah. tentacles, tendrils that branch off. This, this, look, what's beginning to manifest now is what we told you about nearly five years ago. And you're going to live to see the government forced to admit that the planet is in decline. They may not go much further than that, but you're going to see the death of the Pacific Ocean acknowledged and become an accepted fact by a lot of people. And if any of you folks out there are new to this program, do not even dream about eating anything out of the Pacific Ocean. There's not much left to eat. 97% of the bluefin tuna are gone. You know what they're calling it, Yoshi? Overfishing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Overfishing. Yeah, that just can't be. Because yeah, yeah, there's not a lot of fishing left of those. I mean, most of them farm-raised. And a lot of farm-raised ones are just so wiped out now. You know, yeah, well, they, they feed those crap anyhow. Well, so. Well, just, the fishing industry's collapsed all over the place. Okay? It's just, you know, it's just, we got to recognize that. It's collapsing all over the place. So, you know, this is, and these, these are, you know, these are with fishing controls. You know, we've had a fairly strict regime of fishing controls. There's, you know, a lot of effort against pirate fishermen and all that, you know, the rogue fishermen. Right. So it's not like we're not doing anything against, you know, overfishing. It's just that populations are collapsing. And what we talked about earlier, I described to you on that first trip I went took to the shore, uh, 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 east of Tokyo, where the two currents mixed to form the North Pacific Current Saw, the Dead uh-huh. Wallace, and all that. Uh-huh. I pointed out this is, you know, out out to sea where I look from that point is where it begins. All the spawning, you know, the huge whirlpools, the warm, a very nutrient rich cold water, warm water to uh, nurture. The, oh, the plankton yeah. Yeah. and the, uh, you know, that, that this is where the spawning occurs, all the young, you know, the young fish develop. This is where all the feed develops, and this goes across, uh, uh, feeds into the North Pacific current, and then this is what feeds the salmon and the, and the uh, herring and the sardines. You know, they, uh, uh, you know all, your, all your fish, you know, the uh, marlins, whatever, they, they're all living, you know, they're all living off this vast food factories off the coast of Japan. Yeah. It's, uh, that's and now exactly it's being transported over here Japan. in the North Pacific yeah, current of death. death. Yeah. And we're not seeing a lot of life coming across, right? No. All we're seeing is death, you know, uh, coming in dead waters. So it means the Pacific has been effectively, life has been killed from the coast of Japan to the coast of North America. And then that's uh, been marching down the coast of uh, the west coast past wa- uh, wa- washington oregon california in the mexico and what we're seeing this year is really extinction yeah. mass extinction event when uh you know uh i, I when the only shellfish alive that i see are a couple of tiny abalone yeah that's it i mean this is this is amazing right i mean one crap this is just crazy, you know. It's never been like this. No one ever seeing them as those beautiful, beautiful creatures. Like if they had made a movie about this uh, 10, 15 years ago, people would no have been... No believe. No, they would have just said, nah, can't happen. No, can't happen. Well, it is Science fiction. It's happening here. It's happening here. Uh, and, and this is something, you know, we got to confront these guys at University of Victoria and all that and... Yeah. You know, we're told, get off of Dana's back. Dana's been proven right, you know. Dana's absolutely right. And he has every right to be angry you know, with these guys. They have no right to uh, tell bald-faced lies to the public that everything's okay 
histomolic acid. Uh, you know, there's no, not much radiation in the water. I have, no, I have no right to say these things. Absolutely no right. And, you know, the extinction of life on Earth, well, you know, that is something to fight for. I can't, you know, I mean, Dana's right, you know? He's a uh, thousand you know, percent I mean, right. They should drop those charges right now, for God's sake. What what are we supposed to do when we face mass extinction event of life on Earth? Are we just supposed to sit there like a bunch of dumb monkeys and pretend like nothing's happening except this is something that fate brought us as not human responsibility? Or are we supposed to go after the people who caused this? You know, people attempt to evoke electric power who have gotten away with everything. They got tons of money. They have billions of dollars in Canada. They own the uh, largest uranium mine in Canada. Do you think we should forgive these people, let them go, buy their stock shares, or should they be punished? I mean, severely punished for what they have done. And this no, thing no. going in Japan, the radiation, that's absolute total crap. In Milwaukee City, uh, I made a new video about this. I talked about how uh, Community of 2000 disappeared when the tsunami were lost, but they weren't reported. They were near a nuclear waste dumping ground. Another place, thousands died because of some uh, major accident, a nuclear accident north of Fukushima. Uh, the get in the radiation killed thousands of Japanese, and we should go after the people who say no one died because of radiation. I mean, they should be severely punished. I don't know any punishment Dana's that would right. be good enough for. So them. that's what I'm saying. I'm saying Dana is right. Ultimate punishment for those who. You know, allow this stuff to happen and perpetrated this and uh, continue to perpetrate this. Well, they're accessories you know, to mass oh, murder, Yoshi. Right. Come on. They are accessories mass to murder. mass murder. To mass murder. Killing humans is one thing. Destroying the entire, all life on Earth. <laughs> I, you know, I don't know. I can't think of a higher crime than that, you know? We're killing thousands of other species, too. You know, I mean, if human, humans want to kill themselves, that's one thing. But, you know, that's suicide. But it's, we, we, you know, who, who gave us the right to go out and kill thousands of species you know i don't see that in the u.s constitution do you you know we we, we declare the right of every human being to go out and murder a thousand species that's not a protected right that's not a privilege you know it's a criminal offense of the worst so um, so i hope i really hope that people in canada see the light here and realize dana is absolutely right to get angry you know someone's got to get angry somebody's got to do it you know another right. thing He's actually, because of his heroic, selfless work, he has taken Absolutely. he's taken future pressure off these people, these liars. He's done the work for them. Yeah. So later on, they don't have to be so accountable, do they? Because he's already put yeah. the stuff out there. I, yeah, I think yeah, they yeah. just got to drop this crap and leave him alone, for God's sake. Oh, yeah, he deserves the highest cool. medal of freedom we can give to somebody. Yeah. Exactly, that Canadian government owes them a medal. And they should shut down their uranium mines before all the Canada is gone. Yeah. I mean, he's done a service to his country, he's done a service to North America, to humanity, and to every living species out there in the Pacific Ocean. You know, I mean, and it's not just the Pacific. You know, I don't know if you know, it's a very cold night. I, I, is it cold up where you are? It was cold last night. It got down to, uh, there was snow in the surrounding mountains. It got down yep. into the, uh, the upper 30s, 36, mm-hmm. 35, 37. Very cold all of a sudden. Yeah. And isn't that funny? That's just timed after Tokyo Electric Power says it's going to release all the tritium. Oh, they yeah, did. That's and, right. And they released that before. Right. You know, the tritium, yeah. uh, they released that stuff. It's highly volatile. Very uh, active. Yeah. Uh, it's radioactive. Gets into the atmosphere. Gets into the clouds. Goes to the North Pole. Cracks apart the ice. That's what's destroying all the glaciers in Canada now. And uh, wiping out all the snow fields. Ice crystals don't know. And, and when you destroy ice, what you've done is you create enormous volatility. The, the cold, instead of staying on the ground, right? Mm-hmm. Instead of staying in the ice, it's released, and that's why we're down this cold. You know, it's just perfectly timed with the Tokyo Electric say we're going to open, you know, we're going to unloose the tritium. Wow. We're going to dump into the Pacific. Yeah, and who's still, yeah. The, the United States government, the Canadian government, to anybody say, you know, you're not going to release tritium you know, into waters that are coming to our shore. The, yeah, the they haven't even said country, anything about the dam. How about the incineration that doesn't slow down? 
Yeah, yeah, in Tokyo. Yeah, there, there's zero stuff in Tokyo with the Olympics you want to have, you know, with radioactive isotopes, mm -hmm. radioactive isotopes, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, uh, in a very gasified form, you know, gasified form. They've been so. burning that for over four years, folks, and it goes into the air. A lot of it gets yeah. picked up and brought over here. A lot of it comes back down on them. I mean, it's suicide. It's crazy. Yeah. It's nothing. I have you. Can you think of one intelligent thing anyone's really done about this disaster? I, I you know, they, the, the reaction is like, can we think of the worst possible thing to do to make Fukushima worse, to make it global? Oh, yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. Unfiltered. In other words, when they put it in a plasma furnace, you can't filter it out. It exactly. becomes a ionized, you know, an ionized gas. But, that's my point. Yeah. It's uh, it's just beyond belief. Anyway, mm -hmm. uh, our good thoughts, uh, as we've said, and I hope all of yours go to Dana. I hope they drop this uh, these charges against him for simply doing the job that needs to be done. And that's all he did. He cares about this mm -hmm. planet. He cares about the, the countless species that have been lost. And many will never be seen again. Ever. Ever, ever. No. Well, we're, we're, crazy, we're on the doorstep of a, a massive extinction event here. And it's unfolding right before your eyes. No joke. Yeah, no exaggeration. This is the problem. We've got to come up with to defend or protect what we can still do. You know, I think there's a lot of those species, as you're right, are not coming back. A lot of them are localized. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of subspecies, probably tens of they're, thousands they're of gone. subspecies. Never, never even yeah. cataloged. Don't even know. Yeah. 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 This is, we're in the midst of the greatest tragedy for life on Earth. You know, I mean, this is probably greater, I, I've always said that, I think this is greater than what happened in the Ice Age. Yeah. You know, this is, you know, uh, oh, I, I won't uh, argue that, think? not for one second. Um, I totally agree. Problem. Yeah. And it's totally a human responsibility, yeah. totally a policy decision, and governments could have done something, should have done something. The international bodies like the IAEA, the Watchdog Agency, they just got a couple million dollars from the Japanese government, you know, for the $31 million uh, dollar grant from the Japanese government, the IAEA. It's a bribe, basically, to build That's new all. labs. That's all it is. Yeah, it's scientists uh, there, you know, just pay off. They're just pay off after pay off yeah. to the scientists. Everybody's and got a price. Those scientists are doing nothing. Those scientists are doing nothing to yeah. stop this crisis. It's quite different. They're looking the other way, doing meaningless, absolutely meaningless work, which will have zero uh, effect, zero good. is going to come out of it because there's not there going to be anything left to protect. Nothing. Not, uh, you know, no. You know, our civilization is going to be gone. Yeah. This is. You know, think that our civilization can survive without yeah. biology, you know, without the whole biosphere. That is that's absurd. Uh, it's, it's stu it's total sure. stupidity. Yoshi, thank you. Uh, talk to you next week. Um, I think we've summed it up as well as we can do, uh, and that's all yeah. the truth, folks. There's no exaggeration, no hyperbole. Thank you for that, as always, my friend. You take and care. Dana, Dana, if you're out there, we hope to hear from you soon. And yeah, good luck to you. All right. Night. Okay, good night. Okay. Okay, and good night to all of you. And those of you tomorrow who have an opportunity to vote, please do so. And uh, hopefully uh, we're all in agreement what needs to be done here. Uh, Ted Cruz is not an outsider. Give me a break. Thanks for being here. Talk tomorrow. <laughs>